So I wanted to give you a bit of an update today on the coronavirus. Uh, the coronavirus uh, as it relates to uh, Wudong specifically and training in Wudong so that uh, you get some information about uh, going there. So some of you who have followed this channel before might know that I go back to Wudong in China to train Kung Fu regularly. And in fact, I've got a trip booked towards the end of April this year, 2020. Um, to go back and train. So I've got kind of a vested interest in uh, what's going on with the uh, coronavirus uh, in China and around the world, but specifically in China and Wudong right now. So it's kind of a, a selfish interest on my part, so I've been following it carefully. So I wanted to give you an update and some information. Now, just off the top, I have to say uh, I'm not an expert, uh, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not giving you any kind of medical advice, uh, and because I'm not an expert in either the politics or the procedures or anything like that, I'm not giving you an analysis of any of the policies or procedures uh, going on around the world, uh, including China. But I'm just giving you information as it relates to going there to train uh, as best as I can through uh, knowing what's happening uh, over there uh, by being in contact with, uh, with different people there. And I'll give you some perspective as to uh, some of the information around the disease itself. So the coronavirus, uh, there's lots of information out there. So if you're going to research the coronavirus, I really recommend that you go to really reputable sources. You can go to medical websites uh, that are that are well respected, um, you know, the, the Mayo Clinic and, and things like that to get some real uh, clear information. The, um, the government websites uh, in, in your own country would be a really good uh, resource for information. Uh, and really don't rely on or believe in the information that you're getting on social media uh, because there's a lot of rumors and, uh, and people are, are feeling really nervous and scared right now. So, so a lot of exaggerated uh, information is being passed around out there. Now the coronavirus uh, is, it's called the novel coronavirus, meaning the new coronavirus. And coronaviruses are a family of respiratory diseases. So I believe the cold and the flu um, influenza are, are related, um, and even even SARS and MERS that uh, that happened a number of years ago, uh, H1N1. I think they're all kind of related, uh, but again, an expert or a doctor will know uh, more uh, information on that than me. So it appeared uh, and became sort of more of a serious thing uh, in late December, kind of early to mid January. Um, and uh, China was starting to see uh, some emergence of that and realizing that it was becoming a serious situation. So uh, obviously they developed a lot of procedures around that and, and them and a lot of people around the world are doing what they can to really kind of clamp down on it right now. Now uh, it's really centered around the city of Wuhan and Wuhan is in the province of Hubei. Now, the reason that uh, that's important to us uh, if we're interested in Wudong and studying Kung Fu or Tai Chi uh, or Taoism in Wudong is that uh, Wudong is also in Hubei province. Well, Wudong is a little bit northwest uh, of where, um, of where uh, Wuhan is. Uh, Wudong is much smaller. Wuhan is about 7 million people, I believe. And Wudong, I believe, uh, in the main sort of uh, town center, is under a million people, which is pretty small kind of village by, by Chinese standards. And then, of course, there's all the mountainous regions, the different temples, and a lot of the schools are in really kind of sparsely populated areas um, from the bottom towards the top of the mountains. If you drive from Wuhan to Wudong, it's something in the neighborhood of about a five and a half to six hour drive. Uh, so um, so it's, it's not super close, but it's not super far either. So there uh, is definitely the possibility for the coronavirus to be spread over there. Now we're, I'm recording this in, in mid-February, uh, so mid-February 2020. So the virus is uh, spread around. I think there's at this time well over 20,000 people in Wuhan itself um, infected and then worldwide I believe it's over like the rest of China and elsewhere in the world it's up over 30,000 people infected right now. Now in communicating with the people in Wudong um, from what I understand in the main Wudong town at the moment there's about six people infected. Uh, and the cases have been fairly steady, so it could change, but uh, that's, that's the situation right now. Now, because Wudong is in Hubei, 
the Chinese government um, decided to contain the virus, uh, you know, with really strong, um, strong uh, measures. So they've really isolated the whole province of Hubei. So nobody's allowed to travel in or out of Hubei. There's no planes going in or out, no trains going in and out, and no buses going in and out. And in, even within the province, so uh, I've been talking with the people in Wudong, none of the buses uh, within the town are running, taxis aren't running. Um, the temples are all closed. Um, there's sort of tourist buses that go up and down the mountain to the different temples. Uh, that's all shut down and so on. And all the businesses, it pretty much except for a few of the um, grocery stores, are shut down. So pretty much everything is closed. So from what I understand, it's a real ghost town on the streets there. Now you're allowed to go out a little bit if you need to go grocery shopping or get some supplies. But when you go, um, you're really mandated to wear a mask and you have to go through checkpoints at certain parts uh, of the town. And there they'll uh, ask you to sign in and they'll uh, take your temperature uh, make sure you're not showing any symptoms of the disease. So that happens at certain checkpoints and also as you're going uh, in and out of uh, the, the stores like the grocery store as well. So because there's no travel in and out right now, um, any of us that are wanting to go train Kung Fu in Wudong, uh, we just can't get there. Um, the restrictions are supposed to be until February 13th, 15th, something like that. Um, and so they may be lifted at that point, uh, but they may not. We don't really know uh, how much longer uh, this could be extended. So the important thing is to kind of keep up with the news and see what's happening there. Uh, for myself, I've got uh, a flight booked towards the end of April, and the airline I'm flying, I'm, I'm in Canada, so the airline I'm flying is Air Canada uh, and this time, and, uh, and they've uh, cancelled all flights, all direct flights going into China, even Beijing and Shanghai, until the end of February at least. So there's been a number of other airlines uh, around the world that have um, done the same thing. And then also, uh, if you're in the U.S. and a few other countries, they're limiting any, um, any uh, foreign citizens who have been to China recently. Uh, they're not allowing them to come into the country. So that's something to consider strongly, too, uh, if you're wanting to travel. The schools themselves, um, some of them are operating, some aren't. So I've seen uh, some posts, um, I believe, Chen Shixing School uh, is closed. So I think everybody's been sent home uh, if they can go home, um, but it's basically closed and they're not training. Uh, the school where I usually train, um, Master Yuan School, uh, they're still doing training. Of course, they can't receive any new students from outside of the province. So any foreign students or students from across China can't be admitted uh, right now to the school. But the students that are there and living there right now, they're actually still training. Now they've mandated uh, through the government uh, that they train with masks on. And so like when you're traveling throughout the towns, um, you have to wear a mask. Uh, so the same, same goes if you're, basically if you're outside of your, your room or your residence in the school, you have to wear a mask. So they're, they're training, they're still training and everybody's uh, fairly healthy and happy from what I understand, uh, but they're training with masks on. And then the government came to uh, check on that situation and then also put up some, some posters um, with uh, sort of best practices or advice. Uh, so you see one of these posters uh, um, is recommending or really mandating for people to wear masks. I believe this says, if you don't wear the mask, the virus will laugh. Uh, and then this other poster uh, is giving you advice uh, not to play mahjong, because uh, obviously you'll be uh, in close contact with other people if you're doing those kind of activities. But other than that, uh, one of the, the best things to do is actually keep your immune system up. And to do that would be doing qigong, doing tai chi, practicing kung fu, you know, generally making sure that you're, uh, you're a healthy, active person. Now, when it comes to the disease itself, um, there's a lot of worry out there, um, but I've been getting information from uh, you know a lot of the reports here in Canada, and one of the, the big pieces uh, of advice was from uh, Dr. Michael Gardam, who's the uh, Director of Infectious Disease here in the province where I am in Canada. 
And uh, one thing that uh, he's mentioning is putting this whole thing in perspective. So, so right now we've got tens of thousands of people infected and I believe it's uh, 900 people that have died unfortunately from the disease. So it's very serious, you have to take it uh, seriously. Um, but it doesn't mean it's um, you know, a real cause for extreme panic. You have to be careful, but it's important not to, not to panic. If you look at the numbers, and I've been kind of calculating the numbers daily as different reports come out, the disease has really been kind of tracking with a 2% death rate. So out of all the people that, uh, that are infected, generally 2% uh, could and have been dying. Now, uh, uh, Dr. Gardam said, uh, you know, we have to look at this too um, in perspective of the population. And first we'll look at the population of China. So uh, there's about 20 odd thousand people infected in Wuhan. Um, that's a city of 7 million people. So it's actually, you know, a cause for concern that this is happening, but it's a very small portion of the population. And then if you look in China, it's, you know, close to somewhere around 30,000 people infected in a country of 1.4 billion. So, uh, so it's important to, he feels, important for us to keep those numbers in perspective. And then if we look at Wudong, it's a, it's a city of, I think 750,000, a little under a million, something like that, with six people infected. And I don't think any deaths, uh, thankfully. So we have to keep this in perspective. And uh, he was also comparing this to SARS. Of course, we know SARS happened a few years ago, and um, it was a serious situation too, and it killed a number of people. But he said the diseases are very, very different. While this is likely more contagious than SARS, it's not nearly as contagious as influenza, or we'd already have it widespread uh, here, in, here in Canada. And the second thing is that the mortality rate of 2% looks very scary, but we know that's going to drop. And so, you know, this is not as dangerous as SARS was, and it's not as contagious as influenza, and so we're going to have to see how that actually plays out. There's flu, there's RSV, there's a variety of viruses that are going around that, that have the potential to kill Canadians every year. This is the thing with humans, right, is we focus on the new thing because it's scary, but the thing that we're used to, even if it's more deadly currently, we don't pay attention to it. So he was saying that SARS is a disease that's more concerning or more dangerous for the individual and less for the population, meaning that um, the death rate was a bit higher than, uh, than coronavirus. The death rate for SARS was about 10%, and the death rate for coronavirus so far is 2%. And he was saying that uh, SARS was actually much more difficult to catch than coronavirus. So coronavirus um, is easier to catch, so it's been spreading uh, pretty rapidly. But uh, for the individual person, uh, when they're infected, um, the, the, you know, the danger to the self is a lot less. A 2% death rate versus a 10% death rate with SARS, where SARS was harder to catch but had a higher death rate. So he also said to look at uh, influenza, the flu. That goes around to every country um, you know, through flu season, when, uh, generally in the winter time, so December, January, February, March kind of time frame. Uh, influenza has a death rate of also approximately 10% and it's uh, much easier to catch than either SARS or the novel coronavirus. So, um, so it's kind of more of a danger to, uh, you know, to the population and a more of a danger to the self. Um, I think last year from what I was uh, looking at online, the flu killed uh, over 600,000 people, something like 650,000 people. Uh, worldwide. So we have the flu killing 650,000 people worldwide and right now um, we have uh, coronavirus killing somewhere around 900 people uh, worldwide, mostly in China. So uh, in the US alone last year I believe 60,000 people died of the flu influenza uh, and right now nobody in the US has died of coronavirus. So we have to keep these numbers in perspective uh, so that we can be vigilant but not panicky. Um, and uh, he was actually giving advice to people who were actually going to travel to Asia. Uh, people are asking, should I wear masks on the plane? Should I wear masks when I'm there? And he was saying, you have to listen to the regulations in the country that you're in. Um, and in re the regulations or the recommendations of the country that you live in as you're, as you're traveling. Uh, he said, but in general, 
The uh, masks aren't really as effective uh, preventing the spread of coronavirus as you would imagine. Uh, a lot of time we see people wearing sort of surgical masks, the sides are open and people are actually contracting the virus mostly by touching a surface that has the virus on it and then touching their face or their eyes, rubbing their eyes, touching your mouth um, and that type of thing. Um, even even eating. So the most critical thing is to really wash your hands carefully and wash your hands for a good long time, like 30 seconds apparently. You're supposed to wash your hands 30 seconds to a minute uh, with uh, warm soap and water. That's uh, that's critical. If your hands aren't washed, washed to make sure you don't touch anywhere around your face or your head. And people wearing masks um, aren't really protecting their eyes unless you have goggles on and the virus actually uh, can enter through the eyes quite easily apparently. So, um, so the, the mask might be mandated where you are and you should listen to the regulations, but the most important thing is to really keep clean, keep your, keep your hands washed, and keep healthy, well rested, so your immune system is strong, so that if you do catch it, your body is able to, to fight it off. You know, and that's the thing to really consider here, is that catching coronavirus is not a death sentence. Uh, it's something serious, you gotta take it seriously. You don't wanna be cavalier about it, uh, but, you don't need to, to panic, you, you know, seek medical attention if you uh, are feeling symptoms of cold or flu, um, but, but again, you know, uh, don't, don't panic. So I hope this information was helpful and I'll put new information up uh, as I find uh, about the possibility of going to, to Wudong uh, to train uh, after the whole coronavirus situation is contained. And uh, when I get back to Wudong, I will try to continue to document my training and my travels and my journeys there. Um, hopefully you find it interesting and helpful if you're interested in the Chinese martial arts and if you're interested in training in China. Well, thanks again for watching. And if you train, please enjoy your training. There's a lot of very important differences. For one, we know that the death rate with this new virus is much less than SARS. And likely, as we get more and more information, as time plays out, the death rate's gonna drop and drop and drop and drop. So it's gonna be end up likely looking more like uh, seasonal flu rather than SARS. So it's definitely not as dangerous.